Now, before I finish, I should have another pleasant task to introducing a well-known and very successful member of the Zaratoshti community to all of you. Mr. Nadir Godrej is a member of the famous Godrej family of Bombay, Mumbai, who are renowned for their entrepreneurship and philanthropy. The Godrej group of companies are a diverse and one of the leading Indian uh, in industry entities, industrial entities. We are proud to have Mr. Godrich speak at the opening of this Congress. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me to give Mr. Godrich a very warm welcome. Mr. Fellow Zoroastrians, friends, some fear Zoroastrians may not last, and yet they had a glorious past. The Achaemenians come to mind. More noble rulers are hard to find. We often find that might is right, but they believed that right is might. All fates found their rule was fine. By and large, they were benign. They were fair to one and all. They made all barriers fall. Was it strategic or tactical? High principled or practical? Did Asha inspire their belief? No doubt they found much relief, since tolerance led, of course, to the use of much less force. It should be noted that this tribal accommodations in the Bible, the reconstruction account of the Temple on the Mount, and the return from deportation of the entire Jewish nation. And influenced by our thought, Zoroastrian ideas were then brought into the Judeo-Christian tradition, and more than just a little smidgen, both then and later through Essenes, we often worry about our genes and fear that, they may, that all may be lost and try and save at any cost. The all don't think that is fair. Some costs most wouldn't want to bear. But why not think in terms of memes? To me, it most certainly seems that some solace one can surely find in good thoughts in a non-Zoroastrian mind. But if, as now so many fear, indeed someday will disappear, the world will then be bereft of all Zoroastrians, but will be left with good thoughts providing might to all engaged in the good fight. For centuries, the Achaemenians thrived, but we can't say that they survived. As for the Zoroastrian story, once more we reached imperial glory. The Sasanians, however, were beset by challenges with which they met, and Christians from the West quite often put them to the test, and Buddhists too were on the rise, and often they were faced with cries of heretics of every hue, constantly something new. And I suppose it's only fair the priest became quite doctrinaire. Though historically it is a stretch, I will still try and sketch with imperial metaphors as our intellectual spurs two pictures of religious thought. In one picture, truth is sought th through spiritual lessons taught and deeper meaning that is sought. The literal word is carefully wetted and metaphors are interpreted. Whereas in the other picture, one literally follows scripture. Our prophet enjoined us to think. Thoughtless faith leads to the brink. Should religion guide our way or deal with ritual minutiae? In India, we are in a mess. You've done better, I must confess. Your Mobet council guides you well. And as far as I can tell, issues are resolved without dissent. And this has most surely meant that fate, which, that faith, which may well cause a rift, has not done so, and that's a gift your Mobet council gave to you. Much credit is therefore due to Edward Dustur and Edward Bugley, for things could get very ugly if theological disputes cause splits. We would be at the end of our wits. 
Theology is often disputed and cannot by logic be refuted. And faith, which is ideally a link, can often cause unity to sink. Our beliefs indeed should be strong, but we shouldn't assume others are wrong. Some benefit we should give and learn to live and let live. Respecting the other's right to think makes religion a stronger link. And scholars who have been tracking religions often see unity lacking. Thus, multiple splits are the order of the day and schismatic violence often the way. The balm of tolerance gives immunity, allows enjoyment of faith and unity. For years, Zoroastrians were obscure. And though, of course, we can't be sure, we probably would have stayed that way if the British hadn't come to stay in India. Now the Parsi skill at making ocean-worthy ocean ships that could go on trading trips endeared them to the powers that be in the giant East India Company. They acted as go-betweens and soon became men of means. By the travel bug, some were spitten, smitten and duly ended up in Britain. Dada by Nauroji was one such and in his life achieved so much but here what I would like to cite is his concern for the plight of Zoroastrians under Persian rule, imperialists of a different school. As an MP, he sought out the queen and Victoria duly deigned to lean on the Shah then visiting and he agreed that they could bring our Dada Bhai to visit him. The situation was very grim, but the Jazia tax was lifted soon and Nauroji got a special boon a Parsi representative who could visit and then give a report on their condition. Hatari undertook this mission. The communities were then in touch. The Iranis benefited much and always showed their gratitude, though perhaps the Parsi attitude was early on at its best. <laughs> and here, of course, we will test if we can have true unity through both parts of our community. The Zartoshri brothers and Arbab Ghiv, I most sincerely do believe, had their philanthropic attitude partly from feelings of gratitude. And I would also like to share the immense contribution of Farang Meher. The Rivetnas, Rohinton and Roshan, once had the excellent notion of aggregating each association into the Fezana Federation. The journal was also their creation. and we hold them high in our estimation. And Fazana's gone from strength to strength. I can't comment at much length, but all your leaders are very dear, and all of them deserve a cheer. <laughs> Fazana's recognized by UNO as an official NGO, and when human rights are violated, we ensure perpetrate but perpetrators are berated. With the Yazidis, we have a tenuous link, and yet we raise quite a stink when they were brutally attacked. Other good causes will be backed. In India, there is a great fear that Parsis will soon disappear. Now many things are being tried in an attempt to slow the slide, and geo is the latest in the list. More breeding's basically the gist. Many propound the supposition that we could widen the definition. We've always had an aversion to any kind of conversion. With both in the fold, there's no doubt, but often many marry out. Historically, we would rather have the lone parent be the father, but some would rather take a bet on greatly widening the net. In Bombay, we haven't gone that way, and so we can't really say. <laughs> in Delhi, it hasn't worked so well, but in North America, as far as I can tell, there is a modicum of success, and wide acceptance is, I guess, the reason why it could succeed. The rest of us should take heed. Some trends we can clearly see, but the future ain't what it used to be. 
as Yogi Berra famously said, will the trend mean we will be dead? Or will we show that we are wise and find a way again to rise? The next few days will be great. As all of us deliberate, let us overcome our fears and live at least a thousand years. Thank you. Aren't we all proud to have such a delightful person in our Zoroastrian community? We are so proud. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Godrich, for spending your valuable time to come here and give us a speech and lending your good name to us to be proud of. Thank you so much. We enjoyed your delightful speech. My pleasure. Thank you. And on behalf of the Congress, I would like to give you the small gift as a token of appreciation. Thank you Thank so you much. Much. Thank you. I appreciate it.